Well, it's been 10 years since Apple released its iconic iPhone, and since then, there have been continuously, they're trying to top themselves, and now leaked plans of the next big thing, the iPhone 8, show that there could be major changes, as you can see there. And here to give us all the details on what we can expect is CNET senior editor Brian Tong. Okay, Brian, so what could be different about this latest device? <laughs> well, I mean, it may kind of look different, but it also kind of looks the same. Uh, what really the biggest thing that we see here, um, and it's similar to what we've seen with Samsung's design, is the fact that they're getting rid of you know, these bezels on the top. They're trying to make this thing really the entire screen. Um, and it, it, what it allows it to do is make the phone actually have a larger screen while being smaller in size. So you have something like the big 7 Plus versus like the iPhone 7. Well, this new phone that is uh, reportedly going to have around, you know, a 5.5 inch screen will be actually in between the two sizes of those phones. It won't be bigger than the 7 Plus. It'll be in the middle. So it's all about the screen here. And then the other thing is that people are kind of interested and curious about on the backside of some of these leaks, let's just be honest here, Apple can't keep a secret, right? They just can't. <laughs> All these factories, leak, I mean, Rena, you you probably know everything I'm talking about because no one can keep a secret, right? It's true. So there's, there's this fingerprint sensor that is really popular with Apple devices, the Touch ID sensor. Rumors, the, uh, the goal of Apple was to actually embed it specifically into that screen, meaning there would be no physical button. You could technically touch somewhere on the screen. It would be able to, using the latest tech chips, like see your fingerprint through the screen without you don't even have to touch in a specific area. <laughs> now, some concepts show that it could be on the back of the phone, which a lot of people don't like, mm -hmm. but the hope is that if this is the 10th anniversary phone, if this is Apple's 10th anniversary iPhone, yeah. that they could yeah. somehow embed that chip on the front and make it a seamless piece of glass with a fingerprint sensor without a single button. So, you know, when you're talking about this versus the seven, everyone's wondering, do I upgrade? What are the big differences? Well, the big, it depends on who you're coming from. A lot of people are on cell phone plans or, you know, they're on a life cycle where they have their phone for two years and then they upgrade. Apple uh, kind of has their own program where they encourage people to kind of basically upgrade their phone every year. I think no matter what, this 10th anniversary iPhone, although people that might be watching that have an Android phone or other phones are kind of laughing like, oh, what's the big deal? It's all about ecosystem. And if you're in the Apple ecosystem, I think the iPhone 8 is going to be a big deal. Every year they've released a new phone, they've actually sold more iPhones in the previous year. Mm. It expects to be the same way with the iPhone 8. Uh, so I think, quite honestly, if you have a phone that's two years old, you're gonna get the iPhone 8. Mm -hmm. And if you're someone who loves tech and wants to you know, be the guy or girl who walks in the room is like, yeah. check out my iPhone 8, you're gonna get this phone. You're gonna get this one. Okay, now can we expect the usual September launch, launch date for this device? And do we know the price point, Brian? We don't know the price point, but rumblings have said that this phone at least could potentially start at $1,000. Now, a lot of people don't actually put that money up front because they spread over a plan. The actual iPhone 7 Plus with the largest capacity is around just under $1,000. So that's not new, but a lot of people are like, a, an entry level phone for the iPhone 8, 10th anniversary, 1,000 bucks, that's a lot to swallow, like to think about, but most people spread it over a plan. They don't even think about it. They're just like, I'm just gonna get the iPhone. I bet you most people don't even realize how much their phone actually costs because they're paying right. like you know thirty dollars a month. Uh, the other thing about the date is typically Apple does release this in September, uh, but some reports have said it might actually be delayed closer to the October November time frame because this phone is incorporating a lot of new parts and new technology that Apple, like I'm talking about that touch sensor on the screen. Mm -hmm. Samsung tried to actually do the similar thing with their S8, but they were, reports said they were unable to actually get the tech locked down. Yeah. So Apple's now having the same challenge to see if they can embed that in the screen. That might be one of the reasons for the delays as well, but we, we'll see. WWDC is in June, and we're not gonna hear anything really about the iPhone then. It's really about September, but okay. that, that just, tells you how many leaks are out. We know a lot about this phone already. Hey, speaking of which, how does it compare? How does the iPhone compare to the Galaxy S8? I think it comes down to what you want. I think the Galaxy S8 is the best looking phone we have ever seen. It's the best Samsung phone we have ever seen. And the operating system is by far the best that they have put out there. So if you're someone in the Android world who loves Samsung, that is the phone you have to get. Now these days, it's, you don't see many people switching over from Oh, I got an iPhone, I'm going to go get a Samsung. Oh, I got a Samsung, I got an iPhone. Those groups of people, mm -hmm. those, those uh, ecosystems that you're part of, Android or iPhone, have pretty much been figured out now. So you don't see like a 5%, 10% shift in users. Most people have the type of phone and the platform that they want, and so that's not going to really change. But the Samsung Galaxy S8, at least at this point right now, 
it is the best phone on the market and it might be the best phone of the year. We're just going to have to see if Apple can do anything to change that or not. Okay. Well, speaking of ecosystems, I'm told I can't get an upgrade. I'm a, I have a six here, it looks like, until January. You got a six? I've got a six, and CBS has told me I have to wait till January. So I'm going to get that upgrade. We, we, so the we eight better be good. We need to talk. We need to talk. <laughs> okay. Not paying 700 for a new one. <laughs> no, no wait for that upgrade. You're like, no, no, I'm not going to do that. All right. See you at Senior Editor Brian Tog. We thank you for your time, Brian. I right, thank you.